Hi, so we've looked at what I think is the best use of your lucid dreaming abilities. Going into your own mind and basically reprogramming yourself from the inside by confronting the negativities that inhabit your dream world. There is however an alternative and much more effective way of accessing your subconscious mind using a state called sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is something that we all experience as we fall asleep. Your body shuts off as your mind enters the sleep state. And it's a good thing because it stops you from acting out your dreams in the real world while you sleep. The same process happens in reverse as we wake up, but sometimes your mind can wake up before your body and you find yourself lying in bed paralysed, unable to move anything apart from your eyes. It can be quite scary for anyone who doesn't understand what's going on, more so because your mind is still partially asleep, meaning it can conjure up images that appear right in front of you in your bedroom. And as is the case with a dream, if you have a negative thought while in this state, it'll manifest itself. My earliest experiences of sleep paralysis were when I was very young. I would wake up in my mother's bed and find myself unable to move, but I didn't mind. I would just lie there as the morning light shone through the window and the pattern on the curtains would dance around like little fish swimming. This all changed when I was three years old. I woke up once during the night unable to move and it was dark and I was naturally afraid of the dark and this fear quickly manifested itself and my sister's clothes which would hang on the door handle ready for her in the morning started to move around the room. Unable to pull the covers over my head I had no choice but to watch in terror as the animated empty clothes floated around. Eventually I realised I could close my eyes until I could move again or I would just wait it out until I fell back to sleep. When I got a bit older, the situation got worse and closing my eyes no longer helped. I would find myself lying in bed and I would feel little hands pushing their way under the covers towards my feet. I would try to pull away then realise I was paralysed and again I would lie there powerless as lots of pointy little tickling fingers had their way with my toes. This happened a few times until one night I decided I'd had enough and I was going to find a way out of this claustrophobic paralysis. One morning, as I lay at the mercy of the feet tickling goblins, I mustered all of my energy and forced myself out of bed. I rolled onto the floor with a thump, then ran out of the room. I quickly realised that I hadn't woken up, but that I had woken into a dream. Everyone was in their bed, so I went outside into the dark, empty streets. Once, during one of these sleep paralysis-induced lucid dreams, I decided to go back to bed, and when I got there, I got a shock when I saw myself already lying there asleep. When I was in my teens, I stopped being afraid of this in-between state and along with the fear went the entities, monsters, demons, aliens, dancing clothes and feet tickling goblins that it would manifest. Now, when I'd wake up paralysed, I would just lie there and wait for the right moment to get up out of bed and into a lucid dream. I'd learned to recognise the exact moment when I could separate my dreaming body from my real body and start the dream by my bedside. Other times I'd find myself floating up and through the ceiling and I'd start the dream from the top of my house. One morning in my twenties, as I lay in bed in sleep paralysis, waiting for that right moment, I decided to try something different. I imagined myself getting out of bed and sitting on the bedside. Then I imagined myself walking across the room towards the door. I imagined opening it and going out into the hall. I then imagined feeling my way along the smooth, warm radiator to the living room door. But when I started to imagine feeling the cold, hard doorknob of the living room door, I could actually feel it as if it were in my hands. And when I pushed the door open and started to run my hands up and down its slightly rough wooden edge, my vision switched on and I found myself standing at my living room door. Initially, I thought I'd actually gotten up and walked through the house, but I quickly realised I could still feel myself lying in bed. I then simultaneously closed my dream eyes while opening my real eyes and found myself back in bed, still paralysed, staring at the ceiling. I closed my eyes again and I was back in the living room in the dream. Amazed at this split perception, I closed and opened my eyes and switched between the dream and real a few times. Then I headed out into the street, every so often switching between the two. So sleep paralysis is a brilliant gateway into a lucid dream and some would say also into an out-of-body experience or astral projection. 
there is definitely a clarity and realness to a sleep paralysis induced lucid dream, as I call it, and it does tend to include a linear representation of your immediate surroundings, your bedroom, your house, your street, your town, unlike a normal dream or even a lucid dream where you can turn a corner and find yourself miles away. It also offers a level of lucidity unparalleled in a normal lucid dream. And the most amazing part of it is that it seems to be possible to retrieve external information while in this state and also to meet with other dreamers. This all sounds insane to me and I'm pretty sceptical about it, but I've experienced things as have many others that go way beyond the possibility of it being just a coincidence. So again, I'd recommend the wake back to bed method for achieving a sleep paralysis induced lucid dream using the usual wild method of lying on your back and staying focused as you drift away. You should then quite quickly pass through the hypnagogic tunnel and find yourself in sleep paralysis. Usually this is accompanied by weird sensations, vibrations or humming, buzzing sounds. Personally, I've developed a technique for entering sleep paralysis but it's something that has to be done from a lucid dream. When I'm in a lucid dream, I close my dream eyes and I let myself fall backwards. I then find myself falling or sometimes rising up into bed and 9 times out of 10 it works and if it doesn't and it wakes me up, it usually doesn't take long to slip back into the desired state. So once you find yourself in sleep paralysis, the first thing to remember is don't panic. Yes, you'll be paralysed and you won't be able to move anything other than your eyes and yes, you will see, sense, hear, smell and feel things right there in your room but just remember it's all coming from your own mind. It's best to keep your eyes closed anyway and if there are any strange noises or voices, feelings, sensations, vibrations or feet tickling goblins, just ignore them and practice the method that I spoke about earlier. I call it feel your way in and after my first few experiences of using it I discovered that doing a little tactile induction exercise during the day makes it all the more effective. I'll post this exercise at the end of the video and also in the um, description below. So once you're in, you might want to try accessing your deep subconscious or even the collective unconscious, that potential wealth of information that's inside each of us, passed on from the earliest life forms through our ancestors and stored in the very depths of who we are. This deep inner knowledge can manifest itself as all kinds of amazing places, characters, weird dimensions and even as independent beings that seem to bring us information from the deep dark recesses of our mind. You could also try retrieving some info from an external source or meeting with someone else in that state. Then you can try to verify it in the real world once you're awake. Unbelievable as it may sound, it seems to be a genuine phenomenon. But if you think this all sounds a bit too far out and you reckon it's all down to big coincidences, then you can use this sleep paralysis induced state of consciousness for something else, like time travel. And that's what we're going to look at next.